Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Yoga C930. This is a higher-end two-in-one laptop from Lenovo that starts at around $1,400 and goes up from there. Uh, like many of their two-in-ones, you've got all these different positions you can contort the laptop into, and it's got a very nice hinge. Uh, the big change on this one for 2018 and 2019 is that they got rid of that watch band hinge that I really liked on some of these yogas and replaced it with an Atmos soundbar. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop two-in-one is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. There are a number of different configurations for this laptop. Uh, this one is probably gonna cost around $1,500 or so. It has a 1080p 13.9 inch display, but there is a 4K option available. But 1080p at this size looks nice. Uh, this is an IPS display, so it is very bright here and uh, really nice viewing angles on it. I'm not seeing any uh, screen bleed on it either, so I was pretty pleased with the display quality overall. It is, of course, a touch display because this does uh, flip over into tablet mode, as you saw. Now, this one has an i7-8550U. Uh, that's where you get into the $1,500 price point. There's an i5 that's on the base model. Uh, this one's got 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, the base model has eight. The RAM is not upgradable, so what you buy is what you have for life because it's all soldered down. Uh, but the storage is upgradable. Uh, this has a 256 gigabyte uh, NVMe solid state drive. You could swap it out for another M2 drive if you want. And the weight on this one is three pounds or 1.36 kilograms. Not all that heavy. I am very pleased with the overall build quality. I think when you do get into this price point, you should have an expectation of that nice build, and this one certainly has it. Uh, it's all metal. It's got a very nice fit and polish to it. Uh, nice sharp edges here on the side, as you can see. It really has a nice look, and it uh, feels really nice in the hand. Uh, you'll notice the bigger bezel here at the bottom, and this is just because when you're in tablet mode, it's a place for your thumb to rest. Uh, it's the one thing that Windows laptops don't do as well as the iPad does, for example, which is detecting thumb position, which is why they leave these larger bezels there at the bottom. Now on the side here, you've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Uh, these are full service ports, which means that they get power in as well as video out along with data. So they support USB devices along with uh, those super fast Thunderbolt 3 devices. Uh, these are four lane Thunderbolt ports, which means that you get the most out of your Thunderbolt devices that you connect up to it. Uh, so if you've got docks and other things, you can uh, plug in a single cable and get this to turn into a desktop, which is kind of cool. Uh, right here, you've got a USB 3 port, a headphone microphone jack. Uh, right here are the antennas for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There's one on each side here, as you can see. Uh, it's got two by two wireless AC uh, built in for the Wi-Fi, and it's also got uh, Bluetooth 4.1. The keyboard is very nice, nice spacing of the keys here as we've seen on a lot of these Lenovo Yoga devices. It is backlit, so when you are on a plane or something and you want to see your keys, you can do that. Very attractive. Uh, really nice trackpad as well. It's just got a very nice high quality feel to it. It tracks very well and I was very pleased with that. Uh, fingerprint reader is here for using Windows Hello. Uh, you'll notice here there are no ports on this side at all, mainly because you've got those useful Thunderbolt ports on the other side. The sound bar is pretty decent, actually. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of punchy bass to it. I watched a couple of my Star Wars movies on it to get a feel for it, uh, but it does have very nice uh, separation, a nice enveloping sound to it, uh, and I was pleased with what they uh, were able to integrate into the hinge here. And what's nice about it is that it sounds good no matter what configuration the laptop is in, and it doesn't sound different either. So when you, would, when you kind of put it into display mode here, it is pointing down, but it doesn't sound any different than what it does when it's in laptop mode. So I think you'll be uh, pleased with that. Uh, but for the best bass and uh, better sound quality, of course, plugging in some headphones does make a difference, but it is a very nice built-in uh, audio solution there. And at the top here where you see the webcam, there is a little switch that you can uh, flick here to hide the camera lens. It's a mechanical thing. It's not any digital switch, so you can uh, basically get your webcam hidden uh, without having to put tape on the top of your computer. When I was talking to some folks at Lenovo at CES last year, they were noticing a lot of people have been using tape, so they thought they would integrate a solution to that, which seems to work out pretty nicely. And hidden on the back hinge is an active stylus. 
It's not all that large, but it does work very, very well, as you can see here. It's got great wrist detection. You've got a great surface area to write on as well, given the size of the screen here. And overall, I was very pleased with uh, just how responsive it is, how little latency there is, and it's also pretty functional. Uh, you've got two buttons here uh, built into the stylus for doing erasing and other tasks, depending on the app that you're using with it. So overall, a, a very nice piece of hardware here, but let's see now how it performs. So we'll kick things off with some web browsing, and we'll start with my YouTube channel with a 1080p 6D video. No issues there. It seems to be playing back just fine, which is what we would expect out of a computer at this price point. Uh, we also loaded up the nasa.gov homepage to see how well it does with a multimedia-rich website. And there, too, you'll have very, very snappy performance here because an i7 uh, doing those basic tasks has no problem doing that at all. And we also ran the speedometer benchmark test, which sees how well it can render things on the web. Uh, and there we got a score of 147.2. Uh, which is a little lower than some of the other i7-8550U processors we have looked at here on the channel recently. Uh, it's nothing you're going to notice, but it's certainly something that we saw uh, running that test. And we ran it a number of different times to be sure, and that was the score we kept getting back there. So a little lower uh, in its CPU performance here, but nothing that I think anyone's really going to notice at all. We also ran Microsoft Word on it, of course, and all the things that you would do for document creation and spreadsheets and all that kind of stuff also work just fine. And battery life on this looks pretty good. I think you're probably going to see about 9 to 10 hours, give or take, maybe a little bit more if you uh, bump the display brightness down. Uh, that is, of course, assuming you're doing basic kinds of tasks, like maybe watching a video or browsing the web or doing some word processing, taxing the processor more with things like video editing and other kinds of higher-end tasks, of course, will result in lower battery life. But overall, battery life here is not bad at all. So let's take a look at its gaming performance. We've got Minecraft running here, running at 200 to 260 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, this is the Java version of Minecraft, so you can get a feel for that. Uh, older games work very nicely on here. We've got Half-Life 2 running between 115 and 160 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, we also booted up something a little more recent, Rocket League running at 1080p. We got between 60 and 70 frames per second at the lowest settings. And that's one of the issues you'll run into with laptops like this that don't have a GPU on board. A lot of the newer games are not going to run as well as they would if you did have a discrete uh, GPU inside the computer. There are a number out there that do. This one doesn't have it. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 8,533. And like that speedometer test we ran a little while ago, we're seeing performance slightly behind what we saw on another device running with the same processor, namely the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Uh, you can see the graphics test there. We're getting uh, a little bit slower on the frame rates and also on that CPU test there. So I think this chip is maybe clocked slightly lower than what we might see in others, but it really isn't enough to make any real difference in gaming just because on its own, it's not a great gaming laptop to begin with. But you do have the option here with those Thunderbolt ports on the side to plug in a separate graphics processor. Uh, so when you do that and you're home and at your desk, your computer handles all the computational components of the game, and then it pushes all of the uh, graphical stuff out over the Thunderbolt cable to your external GPU box. I covered this about a year ago, so definitely check out that video uh, because you can buy your own enclosure and then pick the graphics card you want and get pretty close to desktop gaming performance without having to buy a separate desktop computer. It might actually be cheaper to get the external GPU and use it with your laptop so you can game at home and then still have the flexibility of taking your computer with you uh, with something thin and light when you're ready to walk out the door. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test to see if the computer throttles itself when it's under load. And there we got a passing score of 98.4%. Uh, 97% is the uh, borderline between passing and failing, so I don't think you'll notice any significant performance degradation on this one under load, uh, and that might be why it's running a little bit slower to begin with. Uh, so overall, the performance here held up, which is good to see. The fan noise isn't all that loud on this one, at least compared to some other laptops we've looked at. Uh, it doesn't come on all that often unless you're really starting to do something that begins to stress that processor. Uh, so you will hear it, but it didn't sound uh, objectionable to me. I've had some laptops sound really, really loud. This one was not all that loud. I also like that they've integrated all of the uh, vents here into the hinge area, so you don't have any uh, air intakes on the bottom. So you can put this down on a surface and not worry about it 
overheating on you there. So altogether, uh, decent thermal performance out of the laptop. And we also loaded up the Jellyfish test file on Kodi in HEVC, 10-bit 4K, 140 megabits per second, and it was able to play that back just fine like most of these modern Intel processors are able to do. Now, I know a lot of you have been interested to see how Ubuntu runs on these devices, and we were able to get uh, Ubuntu 18.10 to boot up here. It seems to be working okay. There's some quirks with uh, the automatic brightness detection here as I've been playing around with the screen, but the uh, touch display works. Uh, you can actually change the screen orientation here correctly too, so it's picking that up. Uh, the sound is working, the Bluetooth is working, but Wi-Fi does not appear to be working on here, so you might have to uh, hunt around for some drivers or maybe swap out the internal Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card for something that's more compatible. There's often something that doesn't quite work right, uh, so on this one it appears like the uh, Wi-Fi seems to be the issue. It's also a little tricky to get into the BIOS to uh, set up an alternate boot device too on it, so I think they're really looking for you to stick to Windows on here, but it does uh, look like it's mostly uh, Linux compatible minus the Wi-Fi issue, so just keep all that in mind. And overall, I have to say, it's a very nice laptop. It's certainly going to cost more than some of the ones we typically look at here on the channel, but I think the quality uh, is certainly here. I'm liking the sound bar. It's quite a different look than the prior edition, but it's sounding pretty nice and overall a, a decent laptop that seems to perform quite well. And again, this one's running a little slower than what we saw out of some other i7 laptops from the same generation of processor, but I don't think it's enough that a consumer is going to notice the difference. And it looks like they wanted to uh, keep those thermal uh, throttling issues at a minimum there, which probably is why it's running at the speeds that it is. But again, not bad here for what I am seeing. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Too Much Sauce, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.